Good evening, YouTube, and welcome back to JoJo Speaks. Thank y'all so much for joining us this evening. Y'all see I'm rocking my pink Power Rangers shirt tonight. Um, I, and I've had this for uh, over 10 years, and I hardly ever wear it. So I said, why not wear it tonight? I'm sporting pink power tonight. Anyways, a couple of things I want you guys to do before we get started. Be sure to press the big red subscribe button. It is free and easy to do, so go ahead and mash that thing. Um, also, we'd like to see some thumbs up on this video, so please give us a thumbs up um, if you are here watching this video. Also, be sure to leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts on the topics we're discussing tonight. Also, be sure to press the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And last but not least, Please be sure to share Jojo Speaks with all your friends, family, and loved ones. Let everybody know Jojo Speaks is out here in these YouTube streets. I got my girl Jennifer Star McCullum in the building. What's going on, boo? Um, I'm up. I did take like a 20-something minute nap. I think it did its job. I'm feeling okay. all right. That's wonderful. That is so wonderful. Um, so uh we'll get I'll I'll get like the stories that I really don't want to speak much on about out of the way. Um, Lil, uh, Lil John, he has, con I don't know if he's converted or he has, he is now, um, uh, uh, has joined Islam. He is now Islamic. So I, I think it's more of an announcement that maybe he's just taking his claim in Islam, but you know, praise God. Good for Absolutely. Him. Um, mm -hmm. find, finding religion is, is always a good thing. Um, yeah. Finding your way to God. There, there are many different paths to him. So do your thing, y'all. Also, Lamar Odom and Caitlyn Jenner um, have, are teaming up to launch a new sports podcast. Um, so I'm sure this is a great idea. My only question is who's going to watch? Because the demographic for them, even though they've been a part of the same family at one time or another, to me, at least, is so different. Now, I don't know who would want to watch Lamar Odom. That's the question. Um, so maybe Caitlin will be the one bringing in the numbers. I don't know. But, you know, shout out to them. I hope it goes well. Um, best this of is luck why to I like TikTok, because I'm sure if there is, if it's anything worth watching, uh, there's plenty of people on TikTok that will be doing it. Uh, so I don't have to. True that. True that. Absolutely. Um, also, Jonathan Majors, he's been sued by his ex, Grace Jabari, for defamation, assault, and battery. I'm assuming that she was um, the victim of that case um, where he was found guilty of one charge out of two, I believe, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm believing that that's that same woman. So No, it, uh, it is. It's her. Okay. All right. So um, best of luck to him. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go. Um, I hope he has the resources to take care of it, you know, if he does end up losing that case. Um, but so be it. Um, anyways, mm -hmm. so our first um, real hot topic of um, of importance, at least to me, um, is that Netflix has announced that they are um, coming out with a new animated series entitled Good Times. Um, I'm not sure if you guys see the pictures of the animation. Um, however, when I saw it, it... Uh, I, I got nervous. I got nervous. Um, I got worried. My question is, who is behind this? Are these African-Americans that are behind this particular production? Or are these non-African-Americans behind this production? Because from the looks of it, it looks like there's some white folks behind this. Um, the animation looks very problematic to me. Um, this 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 worries me and it's like i really don't know how to put it in words why it's why it's troublesome jennifer can you help me out, out, out a little bit do you kind of get what i'm what i'm trying to get at i know exactly what you're saying okay. um as far as it being troublesome i know exactly what you mean um personally um i am somewhat nervous <laughs> of like what what are we getting ourselves into um this this is uh, like a screenshot or whatever of the animated uh thing there now for all we know i'm trying my best for all we know it may really work out in a positive way it just looks different you know so i yeah i just hope that um it turns out to be a positive thing and here's here's another still shot of it right here um so who knows you know what I'm saying? Would I give it a chance? Actually, yes, I would. I'd, I'd give it a chance. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth at least uh, trying to see, you know, what 
we got going on here. And you know what? Let me just say, uh, let me try to look further into it to see like who's the writers and stuff like that. Um, so that we can okay hopefully get some clarification as to who all have their hands in this because it looks very different. Um, right. It's, it's a little concerning. It's giving me Family Guy style cartoon. That's 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 the first yes. thing that came to my mind when I saw the pictures is Family Guy. And when you have a show like that with black characters and comedy, there mm -hmm. are lines that I'm assuming will be crossed that a lot of us will not be okay with. Um, oh. Once again, especially if there Slow are white down. people behind the helm of this. So, so uh, the voices behind it, I can get with. Um, Marseille Martin, you know her from um, that that show with Anthony Anderson that she he had going on the daughter one of the twin girls. You mean um, Blackish? Not Blackish. Yeah, Blackish. Yeah. Oh, the daughter. Oh, okay. Oh, Marseille Martin. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, Jay Farrow. He I didn't was know. On, he, I didn't know he had twins. He didn't have twins on the show. The girl and the boy, they were twins. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, um Jay Farrow, okay. Jay Farrow, Yvette Nicole Brown, mm. uh JB Smooth, which is that's a move, um, Slink Johnson and Rashida. Um, I don't know her too well. Not the Georgia uh, Peach. No, not her. <laughs> okay. Her her last name is Olewala. Olewala? Lord, y'all correct me. But yeah, um, those are the people on there that's casted for it. And it looks like Seth McFarlane is doing it. Mm, that's the man behind least, Family Guy. Yeah, at least um, there are African-Americans voicing it. Right. Um, so that has made me happy. Um, so I think it might be good, Jonathan. I think it might be. I will give it a try. Like I will watch at least the first episode to, you know, at least test it out. I, I just, I just got worried when I saw the picture and I was like, oh, this is going down a road that I'm, I'm thinking is, is not going to be a good thing, but who knows? Maybe it will be tasteful. Exactly. And, and we're just not used to seeing such a huge classic and staple in our history, our television, cinematic, not cinematic, our television, small screen history to be, you know, we, we don't want anybody to be blaspheming. <laughs> right, exactly. Good times. And, um, and I think yeah. the good thing about this is judging from the pictures, it doesn't look like they're taking the actual characters from good times and making yeah, them into animated it's not characters. Exactly. Because I think that would be a very bad issue, especially if it's turned into a comedy and it's almost like you're disrespecting the original characters. And it would I, be I, concerning. That's, that's what I do not want. But um, but um I do have a lot of comments. So let me hit oh, this up real okay. quick. Mm, excuse me. Hey oh. Aaron. Her name on here is smiling with Aaron D. How perfect is that? That is perfect. Aaron, uh, welcome on in, sis. That name, Aaron. Yes. And she said hello on her other account. <laughs> Aaron D, where she has her wrench at. God bless. Hi, Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Dustin. Made, made Thank in you for on. coming. Um, wow, smiling with Aaron D. I love that. Bianca. Hey, Bianca. Hey, Bianca. She made it on in here. She says, uh, happy Thursday. Yes, it is a happy Thursday. Tomorrow is fri Friday. Okay, yes, it's Friday you No, know, I have a lot of one-on-ones and coachings and circling back and all that stuff on Friday. Let me tell you something. I'm about to enjoy my Friday. Um, she said hello. Uh, let's see what else. She said hello to Aaron and Dustin as well. Robin is here. Hey, Robin. So hey, happy Robin. to see you. My ace Rob boom coon in the building. Yeah, she said, hey, y'all, I had me a nap too, Genesita. Okay, I heard that. I you heard know, it makes that. me feel nice to have uh, more people in this earth calling me Genesita. I, I really do enjoy that. Thank you. I still can't believe I, I was the first. I, wasn't it Damon or Dominic this, that called Damon. you first? No, Damon. no, excuse me, Dominic. He Dominic. He, he, he referred to me as Genesita. Gotcha. That's Jennifer in Spanish. <laughs> Not 
technically, but okay. No, it no, it's not. Spanish. It's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Latoya says, uh, hey, family, I miss y'all. It hey, is Latoya. great to see you guys. And boy, am I ready for what's to come. Um, um, I'm going to just say this real fast. I I'm excited for our meeting on Saturday. Um, let's see what else. Everybody saying hello to everybody. Thank y'all for being so sweet and nice. Um, Latoya said they did wrong for those pictures of the characters. That's what I'm saying. That's what's throwing, I think, everybody off. That's what threw but me off. I think we just need to get to seeing the content. Right. To see if it's worth appreciating. So Because it really could be hilarious. Like, Family Guy is hilarious. And... So an American really dad, could, right? And, yes. Yeah. Like it, it really could be like the next, the next family guy. Like it really could be that good we, for all we know. So it, it is worth giving a chance. It just has to be tasteful. Absolutely. Um, Cause Bianca it's a thin said, line y'all. It's a really a thin line. It, between, um, uh, what is it called? Offense and, um, laughter. And comedy. laughter. Yes. Yeah. Um, Bianca said, uh, happy Thursday to Robin and LaToya. Let's see. Like, am I pressing the button? Uh, LaToya says, no darn well, James of Florida didn't look like that. <laughs> okay. But y'all, I think it's better that they did not look like that. <laughs> I think and hopefully they won't have the same names. When you, when you were looking oh, at the, yeah. mm. when you were looking did, did, did they have the same names, Jennifer? It, it say who was playing whom, but I'm about to pull oh, it up okay. on IMDb real quick. Hold on. Okay. I'm sorry. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. I go by uh, Google is our best friends, okay? Absolutely. And that's why I be up on here doing the Googles while we up in here. I like to fact check as much as possible and use y'all as information. She said, who did the voiceovers? I was able to give y'all that information. Um, Bianca said, I wasn't excited when I saw it, saw this. I feel like they're going to uh, butcher yet another classic. I hope not. But how TV is going these days, I'm not banging on it. I'm certainly not banging on it. But I am hopeful. Can I be hopeful? Yeah. Be hopeful? Yeah. I am hopeful as well. I, I really am. I, I, I think talking to you has opened my mind to the possibility of it actually being good. And it could be good. Because if it's good, it could be really become one of my favorite shows on TV. On, 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 and we on can really services. enjoy it. Yes. Um, uh, Latoya said blackish. Yeah, thank you for helping us out, sis. Uh, while we were trying to figure that one out. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, so with this one is taking its sweet time. I'm going to go over to this computer. Lord have mercy. Bianca said, "I wonder if uh, they'll let the old cast do cameos." Hmm. I wonder how they feel that about that. That would be interesting. Okay, it would be. Bianca says Florida has Florida has gone to the upper room. <laughs> she has. She has. Yes. Um, <laughs> Bianca said, I know it, but everyone else is still living, uh, sis Latoya. I mean, it's true. Smiling with Aaron D said, thank you for liking the name. At, hey, it it's, fits it's you. you. It fits you like a glove, girl. Absolutely. Latoya says my B-Day weekend officially starts tomorrow. I guess what and guess what I'm doing? Not a dang gone thing. I heard, in that, in I heard that. Praise God for you. Um, Aaron says uh, Family Guy is hilarious. Yes, I really enjoy it is. Family Guy. <laughs> I only watch it for Stewie. I only watch it yeah. for Stewie, to be honest. Bianca said, not a recession, sis. I know that's right. Uh Latoya says, yes, Bianca says, we got uh, a house to buy in two months. Okay. She said, yes, ma'am, sister Latoya. W. Are you excited? Okay. Um, were you able to see who's going to be playing whom in this uh, thing? Or you weren't looking for it? No, I wasn't looking for it. Okay. So I have the cast. So they have... <sighs> Okay, they have who's in it. They just don't have the name of the character that they're playing. 
Okay, so the, I guess they probably just gonna keep that a they, secret. They don't know that just yet. Okay, okay. Well, um, we'll we'll give it a try and we'll let y'all know. We'll be the first to let y'all know how what we think about it. I don't even think they've had they've got a release date yet for this, so it it, it could be a while before this actually premieres on Netflix. Yeah. That was fun. Okay. Yeah. So on uh, our, our next story, this probably could have been could have been said at the beginning. Um, but Carly Russell, um, I don't know if you guys remember that woman who said she found some baby on the interstate and got, got kidnapped and all this good stuff. Well, she's been sentenced to twelve months of probation. Um, the judge said that it would be a waste of uh, of government resources to put her in jail, and I agree with that. Um, I think she's probably one who needs a little bit of, of mental health. Um, a, a little bit of, of mental health therapy or mental health something going on with with, with that um, because to, there's to an issue of foot. There is an issue of foot. Um, so we're praying for for Carly um, and her family and all those affected by what she did. You like my praying face? Yes, it is. It's, it's very serene. I need to take a picture um, like that. <laughs> Y'all, let me know. Oh, um, Jennifer Latoya said, "Check your messenger." Okay. And you next... know what I, one thing I enjoy about Latoya is she know that when I uh, react exasperated like that, she know that she's I still love her. And that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, so breaking news, y'all. Karen Huger, um, the grand dame from the Housewives of Potomac, uh, she's been charged with DUI following a car crash, a car accident. So um I know this is probably going to be a storyline for one or two or three of the girls on the next season. I'm not sure if it... Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. It is, it is two Black people that came up with it. Okay. And the whole cast is Black. I'm so excited that Slink Johnson is going to be up in there and JB Smooth. I know he's going to be good, loud, and African-American like... Okay. It's just, it's just going to be... We're going to be... I think we might be all right. I think they we got will. The, they got the right people. I don't think these people like would the sign right people. up for it if they had not seen the script and if they, yeah, if and if they it saw it being something disrespectful towards the African American community. So, yeah. So I, I don't. I'm, I'm not as worried as I, as I was. So thank Just you. Let guys me know when you're ready for some comments. Oh, go ahead with the comments. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Shout out! Shout out to Karen. You are still the Rondom, DUI or not? Um, <laughs> For, for everybody out there, please do not drink and drive. Do not smoke and drive. Do not be hallucinated and driving. Be in your right mind when you are driving. Don't be lifted. Please, y'all. The only one that needs to be high and lifted up with the wheel in his hand is Jesus. Okay. Okay. You Let like that? take the wheel, y'all. You like that one, Jonathan? I did. That was good. Uh, Miss Kimberly. Hey. Hey, Miss Kimberly. She says, hey, you all. Uh, Latoya says, excited is not the word, sis. She ready to get into that house. Uh, she also says, me and Justin have already started packing, which is good. Because wow. you're going you gonna to wish you did in a couple of months. Right. Anyway, <laughs> and Miss Kimberly says, I think uh, Carly's sentencing was fair. I agree. Agreed. Your thoughts? I agree with it as well. Um, you know, what, what, what she did, she really... I won't say that she didn't hurt anyone um, because there were people affected by what she did. Um, and people had government to, resources, yeah. um, police officers were out looking for her and all this good stuff were, were all involved and things like that. So it's not like there were no victims in this, but um, I am not upset with the fact that she only got 12 months probation. Yeah, that's that's fine with me. Uh, Bianca says, packing is H-E double hockey stick, sis. I'm going through it right now. I am not happy about it. Uh -oh. uh, Kim says, uh, the embarrassment, yeah, and uh, scrutiny, is, yeah, scrutiny is jail cell enough. Absolutely. Uh, I wish there was some kind of um, court sentence therapy that she got because she she needs some assistance honey her and her parents for especially for them that, that's why she was able to do what she did because her parents followed her up for all her life like, yeah. no wonder no wonder latoya says karen slick tried to uh blame it on mother's day yeah and Latoya says, uh, I found out during this uh, process that I have a separation anxiety with my clothes. Sheesh. Somebody call Yanla, please. Oh, wow. <laughs> Need her to come fix my life. <laughs> um, and Bianca says, same, Latoya. I can't even fit in no more. Oh, wow. We, we Child, need to I find can, I can let go of clothes real quick. 
you know, I ain't got no problem with it. Um, it's just the purchasing of clothes is my issue. Exactly. And you have to purchase clothes. Kimberly says, I don't particularly care for the self-proclaimed uh, grand dame. <laughs> She's too old to be drinking and driving. Mother's Day is two months away. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she was celebrating her being a mother, not everybody. Who knows? Um, also, another story that I should have uh, gotten uh, gotten out of the way, because I don't think I mentioned it. Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan, they have called it quits yet again. Um, oh, no. Remember, they had broken up um, a couple of weeks ago. Then we found out that they had gotten back together. And mm -hmm. so now they are split up once again. Um, oh, so wow. There's that. Um, oh. I really I really don't want to get into my thoughts on their relationship because I don't even watch Real Housewives of Miami. I know nothing about their relationship whatsoever um, because she's a beautiful woman and he is a very handsome man. Um, so I guess I, I hope they find love in, in their own way. I really do. Um, so special prosecutor Nathan Wade um, has resigned from the Trump Georgia election case. Now, if you guys remember, Fonnie Lewis, um, Fonnie Willis, rather, Lewis, where did Lewis come from? Fonnie Willis, uh, she was told by the judge that um, that either she needs to resign from the case um, or Mr. Nathan needed to resign um, from the case, needed to step down from the case um, before it moves forward. So Nathan has decided to step down from the case. I'm glad that that has been taken care of. I'm so glad that Fonnie Willis has not been removed from the case because I know that she's going to put her best foot forward. Um, what do you think about uh, about this? Are you happy with, with this news that he stepped down? Um, he just had to do what he had to do just because of the scrutiny that was coming upon them. Though they shouldn't have been doing whatever they were doing, hey, at least, you know, they were able to continue to move on because there was no real issue uh, going on. So, hey, you know. Yeah. Oh, well. Do what you got to do. Um, so New York Attorney General um, Letitia James, I think is her name, um, she has taken the first steps um, into uh, into seizing Donald Trump's assets. Um, they've been looking at quite a few things. I heard that they've already um, they've already taken his plane. Um, I'm sure they're looking into um, seizing his properties, um, uh, which is probably going to be next. So we'll see um, how that goes. And also during a uh, during a Trump rally, he was talking to auto workers, if I'm not mistaken. He literally said that there would be a bloodbath if he does not win the election. For a man running for president to utter those words out of his mouth in front of a crowd full of people really shows you where we are in today's time. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that we're too sensitive these days, that, you know, a lot of the comedy that was happening back in the 90s, we can't do it now. Clearly, Donald Trump has not gotten that memo because he still is saying whatever comes to his mind, whatever he feels like will rile up his base. Um, the same thing that incited, in my opinion, January 6th. Exactly. Um, clearly, literally having a noose up, uprooted um, and, 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 and put on the lawn to hang Mike Pence. Like, we're, mm -mm. this is... This is ridiculous. Um, uh, Latoya said about the whole uh, Michael Jordan. Was it was it Michael Jordan Jr.? Marcus Jordan. Marcus Jordan and um, Larsa. Uh, Mike Latoya said. Mike said. Eh, eh, eh. Mm -mm. Larsa, you got to be quicker than that. Um, and also, Donald Trump's lawyer um, revealed uh, that he can't. Um, afford his six his four hundred sixty four million dollar bond um, in his fraud case. Um, I heard that he had talked to Elon Musk about getting some money. I haven't heard that Elon Musk has given him any money, so I don't know. I, we'll probably never know whether he got they, it or not. They've even gotten uh, have tried. They said I heard the the number thirty eight or so, um, like people to insure the money and stuff like that. Mm. No one's saying yes, because they know he ain't about to pay nobody. No, he ain't going to pay nobody back. Because you know he's probably just asking for the money out front. like cause... Oh, Robin, well, they, they need to deal with him. Because he, even if he has some money, he ain't going to pay it. No, he's not. Uh, Robin said Michael dipped out, us, dipped out on us again. Like, I don't know. Um... He ain't said nothing, but you know, we think the best of our friends, family, and loved ones. 
So for all we know, he has a wonderful excuse. Maybe he's snoring right now. Because it yeah. could have been me. Well, he, he said that he's not at home. He texted me back and said that he's not at home. So Oh, there you go. He's not at home. There you go. All right, uh, Bianca says, Latoya, I still have clothes from high school, sister. High school. Uh, just I still have. I still have my high school um, drumline band T-shirt in a box. It I, says I have... Blaze. It literally says Blazed on the front of the shirt. How do you um, let y'all get away with that? I don't. Well, it's because we made the shirts ourselves. Jay, it had Jay it Ingram. Up. Um, shout out to our percussion instructor, Jay Ingram. He was not involved in the creation of of that of that shirt whatsoever. But yes, it's that we our our mascot, our school mascot was the blazer, which was actually a horse. So we put blaze on the front of our t-shirts. And um it was because um quite a few of our drumline members liked the like the marijuana. So the ganja. they were typically blazed at practice. Um during, before, and after school. They were always highly lifted up, okay? <laughs> mm. Mm. They always get to practice smelling strong, strong smell of weed, honey. Like, you could, ain't no way you could get away from that thing, honey. No way. Oh, good Horrible. times. Good times. My Lord. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh, wow. Bianca says, I have my majorette costumes too, Jonathan. That's what's up. That's what's come on, Major Rat. Yes. Ciao. Uh Latoya says I still have my prom dress. Yeah, dresses. Don't judge me, judge your mama. Yeah, I still have mine. I have performance dresses from high school as well. Of course, my wedding dress. And yeah, dresses that were made for me. <sighs> I ha I have them all. Do you still have your debutante dress? I don't. Oh, okay. That, now that dress was huge. It was huge. I remember you getting <laughs> the van in that thing. That thing was huge. Huge. Uh, yes. Uh, to know Jennifer is to know I was a Delta debutante. She was. She was. Oh, that was that was a good time. I still remember being at, at at that. What was it? A coronation? Whatever, whatever it was called. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah. At the at the township auditorium. I think we were sitting in the rafters. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. That that was a lovely, a lovely situation. It was. I, I kind of felt like, what is this for? You know. But it was a moment. <laughs> it was. Yes. It was for ceremony. That yeah, for pop and circumstance. Have... And, That's what it was and they for. had so many of us. It was, and it's not like we got to know each other. It was just, hmm. we're here. Ain't it something? We didn't try to get to know each other, but it was a moment. We all got our dresses and my dress was huge. And you know, Miss Ernestine made the bulk of my dresses, right? Now I know. Doesn't surprise she, me though. She made that dress. She made, the, the last dress she made for me, I'm pretty sure was when I got Miss um, Miss 101. Okay. Okay. And she made that teal dress for me. And she made, uh, oh, she also made my performance dress. It was a black dress. It was halter, black dress, beautiful gown, uh, gowns, gowns. Um, beautiful gowns, yes. For being on symphonic orchestra. Oh, okay. At okay. Ridgeview. I had a gown. And it's like, you know, I'm, I, I keep on thinking back. It's like, I don't remember getting any of these. Like I remember her fitting me. I never asked for it. You know, my mother just said, Oh, you need a dress for this. Okay. And had a dress made. Mm. And you know, we, we might have not been the richest. But oh, well, we got made. it done. We got it <laughs> oh, done. The job okay. got done. We might have not had all the money needed to go down to Disney World and all that okay. stuff. But let me tell you something. We were in the timeshare. Okay, we were. We, we were, were. Okay. traveled. Yes, well traveled. Absolutely. That's what I've can talked say to mommy. Us. Mommy said that sometimes we shouldn't have gone gone on the place, go to those places. We ain't had the money to do that. Wow. But we went. Y'all had to get out there. Wow. Um uh, Latoya says, Bianca, I was um I was on the flag team. That thing was really? cheap. That thing was cheap. So it's uh, in somebody's landfill. 
Mm. Latoya asked Jennifer, do do y'all have do y'all have to do the waltz? Yes. We had to do all that dancing and stuff. And yeah, we had to have it was just one night of practice, but we got it. Really? Mm -hmm. That must have been a long practice. It was. Um, mm. and that you had Andre there, you know, for all that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bianca said, "Yeah, ain't nobody could have t told me that we wasn't gonna get married." You hear me? You 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 right about that. You're nobody right about that. nobody could have told me any different. Don't tell nobody. Keep that to yourself, Jonathan. Okay. I will. Thank you. Uh, Latoya says, "Bianca, I can't find my uh, yearbooks though." Oh, uh -huh. I would uh, love to go back and read some of the things uh, we used to say to each other back then. And lastly, Bianca says, I have my yearbooks from middle high school and I have my uh, prom dress also. Yeah. I I I'm through. sure I still have my yearbook somewhere because um, I still don't have people writing in them, left and right. Um, I yeah. just don't, I just can't remember where they are. Um, but anyways, Candace Owens, um, she was uh, on an interview on The Breakfast Club and Charlamagne asked her about the fact that she talked so much about the black family. However, she found herself marrying marrying a black man. And she put it like white, this. White man. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, a white man. Um, and so she put it like this. She said that it's hard for her to find a man who meets her intellectually. And she said that her husband um, his intellectual side really blew her mind. Um, he really matches up with her as far as the intellect is concerned. And when I was hearing that, knowing who Candace Owens is, all I was hearing was, Black men are not on my intellectual level. Therefore, I have no business dating them. They have no business approaching me to date me. That's just all I heard. Um, that's not exactly what she said, but again, knowing who Candace Owens is, knowing how she operates and knowing the things that she tends to say, um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's what she meant by what she said. Um, I don't know if she's really necessarily getting backlash for this. Well, she probably gets backlash all the time. So I'm sure she's getting okay. some kind of backlash for it. Um, but it to me, it sounded like she was diminishing um, the intellect of black men in general. And Again, it's just the way that she was explaining it, you know, that 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 his intellect, she was so, so gung-ho about this intellect type of thing. And it's it, it's like, you know, you can say you can say that in a way that does not disrespect an entire group of men, because that's exactly what it was. That's how I read it. Jennifer, if you if you had heard it and, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you what, what I heard. What what were you thinking? Do you think that that's what she was saying? I actually have not heard it, but from what you're saying and from, you know, hearing her speak of, about different things, uh, I believe I, I believe that she's not necessarily trying to discredit the African American community, but I'm sure she did not make I'm sure she did not clarify and verify that she's not trying to say that there isn't a black man that's intellectual enough to be with me. Uh, but another thing that I, uh, I'm thinking about is think about the spaces that she's in, you know, where are you going to find a black man in those spaces? Mm -hmm. She's been kind of on this ride ever since, you know, college and stuff like that. I don't believe that she would be able to find a black man that would have any kind of respect for her with the way that she was talking. And to be honest, I also believe just to move even further, I, I, I don't believe there's any man or a black self-respecting black man that would have walked up to her and say, yeah, I would like to get with you. Yeah. I just don't, I simply don't see it. I don't see her being in those spaces. That's true. That's very true. And this could be the first really intellectual type of man that she's come across. I don't know exactly how long they've been together. Um, so I don't know what their history is. Um, but, you know, maybe this was the first man that she came across that really met her intellectual needs. And so maybe that's the reason why he, he, he was it. Because, you know, it would be ignorant to say that there's not a Black man on this earth that would be able to um, to match with Candace Owens intellectually. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. That's, it's, it's, 
But and I wish she could have said something like that to clarify the fact that she's not diminishing the intellect of Black men in general. She's just saying that this man who just so happens to be white is a man who meets me intellectually um, and feeds me intellectually. And so that's the reason why we're so good together. But but also on top of that, Jonathan, if she j let's say she did have a Black uh, husband, mm -hmm. I personally would be concerned for him and his thought yeah. process yeah. for her to speak down about the uh, community the way that she does. How on earth do you think that she would have a black man in her home? It would surprise me if she had a black if she had a black man. That's what that's, that's really what would. No self in my once again, in my opinion, no self-respecting black man would want to be with a woman like that. Right. Exactly. And I honestly, even though. I mean, there was really no way that she could avoid the question. I just wish that this would not have happened so that we would not have heard this from her because exactly. this just makes her look even worse than she already does. Exactly. Um, and I'm really surprised at how popular she is. That that surprises me. How, I'm like, Jonathan? Who's, who's how? really supporting this woman? It's, it's the, it's the rage. Base? She does well with rage farming. People unfortunately like to be angry mm. so people can look at her to get angry about stuff like trump supporters That's, yeah but not only trump supporters you know there's a lot of caucasian people that think like her mm. yes yeah. and she validates those thoughts yeah so of course you're going to have a lot of people trying to watch her um to be honest the bulk of me believe she does it for the money i'm sure she does but, um, but, at that, but at the same time, I do think that she believes the things that she says. Yeah, because she says it with her whole chest. Ab her whole chest. Okay. And, you know, it's... Man, I, there have been times where I've seen people gather her and get her together because she speaks so vehemently against, you know, things like, you know, trans transgender people and things of that nature. Oh. But she doesn't have, she don't know anything about it. So it's like, it's really difficult. Ignorance. Yeah. Just, just, just a whole nother level of ignorance, which is why she don't really speak on them, but she actually makes sure to share her stance. Like, you know, all of this is stupid. But um, Latoya says, y'all, why is Yancey out here looking like a whole white woman? Let me tell you something. Lighting is a hell of a thing. It is, especially um, when you're that light-skinned. Exactly. Latoya's, Latoya also says, Joe Nathan, I heard uh, I wasn't a cool kid, so so I had to settle for the nerd. Ciao. Uh, Kim says... Um, it, it isn't surprising that she's married to a white man. I agree with your assessment, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Miss Kimberly. Miss Miss Kimberly. Um, mm -hmm. So, so um, our, our next story. So six Mississippi former police officers um, are in the process of being sentenced. Four of them have been sentenced. Um, oh, these, no. these six men, um, they essayed um, and tortured two black men. Um, they had gotten a, a phone call from one of their neighbors saying that there was a white woman that was living with them. They didn't say that she was being abused. They didn't say anything bad was happening to her. They just said, and this is Mississippi all again. This is Mississippi. So remember where we are. Um, so these officers just heard that this white woman was, was, you know, cohabitating with these two black men. So they went to um to these to these two black men's household, um, did not have a warrant whatsoever. Uh, they tortured these men. Um, they threw food, food products on them. They spilled milk and chocolate syrup on them and, and all this good stuff. Again, they essayed them. So I'm sure they were doing things of a sexual things. nature to them. Um, we're not going to talk about those done. things, but you know. Um, but y'all you, know where we're going. Um, so here are four of the sentences. So Christian Delton, he was sentenced to um, to 40 years in prison. Um, uh, Daniel um, Opdyke, um, he was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Uh, Jeffrey Middleton, uh, he was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Um, and also, oh, that's all the sentences I got. But I'm so glad that these that these three men thus far have been sentenced to, to, to me, this sentence is a little bit light, but they did all plead guilty. And so a lot of times you get a little bit of leniency when it comes to you pleading guilty to a crime that you've yeah. been, um, that you've been charged with. Um, 
they did apologize. Well, some of them did apologize to the victims yeah. in court. Um, however, the victims are um, filing a multi-hundred million dollar lawsuit against um, against the police, um, to, 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 against that particular police department. And yeah. I'm sure they will be victorious with that. Um, yeah. And the thing, the, the sad part is, about it is, these men were not believed when they first, when they first, um, when they first said that this happened to them. They were not believed initially um, until more evidence came out about it. Um, but Jennifer, when you first heard this happened um, to these poor two two black men, um, what what were your thoughts, and and how do you feel about them being receiving these sentences? I think um, the the most someone got sentenced to was forty years. I first said unto myself. <laughs> oh, one one more thing. One okay. of the men was literally shot in the mouth, mm -hmm. had a gun in his mouth. The man pulled the trigger and mm -hmm. he was shot in the mouth. That particular man who shot the man, um, he was sentenced to 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. I thought that should have been a life sentence to me. When, when yeah. you shoot someone in the mouth, you're, you're expected trying to kill, to kill that. You, you're yes. expected to take that person's life. So mm. there you go. go. Go ahead, Jennifer. I'm sorry. First of all, look at God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but second of all, with all of this stuff that that happened and 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 the way that they move with such boldness my first thought is there's no way this is the first time this has happened no mm -mm. there's absolutely no way um so i give god the glory for his timing and having all this stuff uh come out prayerfully there won't be any more things going on like that in that area mm -hmm. um i know that may be a tall thing to ask for but i ask the lord that we, that can that stops it's, it's just absolutely disgusting and i can only imagine how the family of those people are feeling and looking and a part of me feels like the people that apologize i'm feeling like those are the ones that just came along for the ride they weren't exactly here for it but they were just with the, with the boys and they had to be with the boys you know what i'm saying wrong place wrong time not, not wrong worse. place wrong that's that's worse than wrong place wrong time it is they worse. were there and they, they, they didn't stop it exactly and right. for all we know it felt kind of like the the boys mentality the the frat mentality is like mm -hmm. i just have to go along to get along with these people right. um and with with this you know County, I guess that's just what they do, and I just have to be there. I believe that's why they did those apologies. The ones that didn't, I believe, you know, felt vindicated, not felt vindicated, but they felt like that's the thing that they're supposed to be doing, and I'm going to be doing what I want to, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, may God hear their prayers. I like that. I Absolutely. Like that. May, may God, God hear, hear their, their prayers. prayers. Um, because, I, you know, I, I don't have nothing for them. Miss um, <laughs> Kimberly uh, said, no, hold on. Hold on. Latoya says, I meant she wasn't. Okay, I don't know if you're not. Um, Bianca said, Lord have mercy. That's disgusting. It is. Mm -hmm. um, Latoya also says, y'all, I just finished uh, watching on All Quiet on the Set. Yeah, we're, we're going to be. Um, we're we're going to be talking about it, Latoya. That's the next topic. Miss Kimberly says, what is wrong with people I know? Um, yeah. They had no warrant and went in the home wrecking havoc. Yes. Um, Bianca says, I heard that was, cr I heard that was crazy. Latoya is talking about the thing as well. Yes. And she confirmed that it was. They were charged both federally and by the state. Um, I believe the majority of the charges were federal charges. I haven't heard that they were hate crime charges. That's very interesting to me at, to find out as to whether they, I don't believe they were actually hate crime charges. Yeah, I don't but think Mississippi has hate crime charges. What's yet. difficult, and they should, what's mm -hmm. difficult about it, but, but you know, people that um, are racist, is, is they're, they're difficult, it's difficult for them to um, say they are. So, um, and it's also kind of difficult these days to prove that it's racist. You know. Right. It is difficult to prove that in someone's mind that they are racist until unless they do something overtly racist, like Dylan Roof, who who mm -hmm. uh, who took the lives of those nine people at the Speaking AME church in Charleston. Of Dylan, did you see Croy? And he had uh, he went to Memphis, Tennessee. The dude that um that shot yes, um, Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle. That's his name. It was something. Kyle yeah. Rittenhouse. Did you did you see the reaction and everything? I'm over here thinking like, why did he go to Memphis? Does he know what Memphis, where Memphis at? Uh, 
I, 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 it was free. The fact that that man is still walking free um, is uh, is uh, such a miscarriage of justice. And the fact that his judge was on his side, was a Trump supporter, um, and was playing to the defense the entire case. Um, the fact that this man is still walking free, and he's probably getting paid um, by different organizations who support him um, to fund his life. Um, the but, fact but that he, he had the mm. nerve to have an event where he was speaking at who was he speaking to? Who knows? What was the event for? Oh, I don't he was, care. He was speaking to um, young black and white people that are against him. And they were going off on that boy. I, so I mean, he literally just, wanted I, people who did not like him to attend this particular meeting. Of course not, Jonathan. He oh. had he had like a whole whole thing. The The thing, you know, it was free to see him or whatever. Whoever had him on, he was on. And it was free. And of course, when people find out that somebody like that has a free event, they just pretty much take up all the tickets, you know, okay. and don't come. And the people that did come, they came to have a conversation with the man. And um, one thing, I, gosh, man, I wish I check your TikTok as soon as you get off. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, one thing I will say, that man will never know peace. No, he can't even get into college because nobody wants him at the college and the colleges that were about to accept him. The uh, students that were already there would say, no, no, we're, we're not having him there. And then they'd have to cut him loose. Right. So he's never going to know or understand peace. Um, but once again, I hope the Lord hears his prayers. Um, Latoya says, I saw that, Jenny. What you saw? Because I don't even know what you talk about. Like, seriously, I don't know. Well, go ahead. Anyway, so this past week, I, I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before. Was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day before yesterday. I went on to HBO Max um, and I watched this four-part documentary called Quiet on the Set. Um, this is a documentary that is based around um, the creator and executive producer of a lot of the shows that we watched, um, people our age in our 30s, that we watched on Nickelodeon. Um, he was... Um, a creator and well, I don't know. I don't know if he necessarily created. I think he did. Yeah, he was a creator and producer of all that. He was a creator and producer of Drake and Josh. Um, I believe he was involved in some way in Kenan and Kel. They didn't say that he created or produced on Kenan and Kel, but he was actually on the Kenan and Kel show. He was a character. I think he was um, he was uh, Kenan's boss um, mm -hmm. on the show. That's, that's who he played on the show. Um, his name is Dan Snyder. Rather, um, I'm sorry, I didn't even say say the name. He did name, the so. Amanda show. <laughs> He did the Amanda show, yes. Um, he was very close with Amanda, according to the people who were interviewed in this particular documentary. And there were former All That castmates um, on this documentary. Um, uh, Katrina, who was on the original cast of All That, um, she was one of the younger girls. Um, she grew up kind of fast, at least in my opinion to me. Um, and when she started looking like an adult, that's when they kind of booted her out. Um, but she looks beautiful. She's blonde now, so she's not recognizable, at least not to me. I didn't recognize her when she first came up um, until she explained who she was. Um, Leon from All That, um, the, remember the short black ball headed boy? Um, my favorite, my favorite sketches from all that are the Leon and Fuzz um, sketches when he was with the puppet and he would abuse that puppet. So <laughs> that I wish you'd have known then. Child, that was hilarious to me. I'm, I, I'm, and I'm going to watch, watch those videos on YouTube after this thing goes off because I need to remind myself of the hilarity that was. And he was such, um, he was just so funny to me, but he looks... Leon looks good as a grown man. Like that man looks looks good as a grown man. Like a grown Let me just man. Say that, okay. Um, a couple of um, one other African American um, cast member who was there when the show got rebooted was on the show. His name was Brian. Um, his mother spoke on it as well. Uh, the girl with locks, the black girl with locks, who was on the reboot of all that, she was on on the documentary as well. And so they went into some. Um, uh, some intricacies as far as how production went. Um, 
the fact that there was some adult comedy that went on with yeah. um, with with a lot of his productions, um, things that we should not see kids doing. I um, saw a couple of clips of Ari Ariana Grande pouring water on herself while she was laying back in a bed. Um, there were a lot of things where things stuff was being squirted on people's faces, um, mainly females' faces um, in particular, which were to emulate um, something sexual. Um, so there were a lot of sexual things that were happening um, when it when it came to Dan Snyder, although he never was accused. He was never convicted of touching anyone or sexually uh, or essaying anyone. Ooh, he was I, almost, I almost said that thing. Um, he was often massaged on set. He, he would ask um, typically women in the wardrobe department to give him a massage. So nothing overtly sexual, but just very sexualized. Um, uh, he definitely played favorites. Around um, children. Um, Katrina was actually the one that introduced him to Amanda Bynes. Um, she had him going to the lab factory um, to see this girl perform. Um, and once he saw her, um, Amanda Bynes basically replaced Katrina on the show. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, also, there was a, 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 a production assistant that, that was on the show. Um, of all that, um, who was um, who was charged and convicted um, of um, of things that he did? Um, he sent a nude to um, to a, I believe she was a fifteen year old, if I'm not mistaken, um, and he had memorabilia from um, from other from other girls. He had this nine year old girl's underwear in a Ziploc bag um, put away. Um, it was really really bad. Um, the most shocking thing that came out of this documentary was the fact that someone by the name of Brian Peck. Let me go to his. Let, let, let me go to his. While uh, you doing that, let me say a few of these things here. Comments. Uh, yeah. Um, when I asked uh, Latoya what I, what she was talking about, she she meant the cow cow story. Oh, yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse. Okay. Yeah. I oh, saw that. and that sketch was Leroy and Fuzz, not Leon and Fuzz. It's Leroy. Yeah. His real name is Leon, but it was Leroy. Okay. Uh, Latoya also says, "I Carly, Sam, and Cat, and Victorious." I didn't watch those yes. shows. I think I was watch... was I too old for that, or we, we just were didn't too watch old for that. Shows. That okay. those those shows came out in like the early two thousands, and so and we, we, we were kind of getting that. out of the Nickelodeon type of thing. Okay, we were too grown. Right. Um, Aaron says prayers to all the children children actors who have been hurt. Uh, Latoya says, and that one with Jamie Lynn Spears also. Yes, Zoe One Hundred One, I think is the name of her. Yeah, show. please tell me why I've been hearing um, rumors that the baby that she had was his. That's what that's what they're saying. I don't. I wouldn't believe that though. I, from what we're saying, I don't know, child, because they're saying that they had uh, that they saying not saying that is true. Allegedly, um, he he was he did the same thing with um, Amanda, but with Amanda. they did say that Amanda and and Dan seem to be very very close, like extremely close to one another. Um, yeah, and they, he they was one of the that. reasons why she fell out with her parents. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's that. They're saying that it. She had to um, not have a child um, right. at the age of thirteen. That's what people saying, mm. allegedly. But that that kind of talk is all out there. Uh, Latoya said, "Leon Lonnie Love just had to say that." Okay, okay, Reverend uh, Leon Lonnie Love. Okay, okay get it like straight, that. get it correct, get it accurate. Okay. Latoya says, "I think Dan had m mommy issues and projected them onto the female writer staff and cast." Mm. Um, Robin says that mi that miscarriage of justice is called white supremacy. Yes, yeah, talking about Calvert and House, I'm sure. <sighs> yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, and Latoya also says. And was pen pals with John Wayne G Gacy. Yes, the um, Brian Peck man that I was going to get yeah. to in a little bit. If if that ain't if that don't send some red flags, I don't know what will. I tell you, go ahead. Yeah. So the most shocking revelation um, that came out of this was um, a um, a dialect coach that worked with the kids by the name of Brian Peck. Um, he. Ard, 
and S aid Drake Bell. Drake Bell was the star of The Amanda Show. He was also the star of Drake and Josh. He's also a musician. Um, he's got plenty of work out there if y'all want to go support this man. Um, you need to watch this documentary. Um, I, I recommend that everyone watches this documentary because the way that Brian Peck manipulated the situation with Drake Bell. Uh, mm. Drake Bell's father was his manager. And Drake Bell's father had his eye, his good eye, on Mr. Brian Peck. And he knew that there was something going on with this Brian Peck character. He knew a problem was afoot. And there was a way that he got in between Drake Bell and his father, con excuse me, convinced Drake Bell to fire his father as his manager so that he could spend more time with Drake. Um, and went on to not only R Drake Bell, not only S A Drake Bell, Drake Bell, but did a lot. And and their court documents that are released in this documentary, so you can actually see what happened to Drake Bell. Although Drake Bell was interviewed for this particular documentary and did not go into specific detail as to what happened to him specifically, however, you can see specifically what happened to Drake Bell in this documentary and. It's so disgusting Disturbing. what this man did to Drake Bell. And I I just can't do anything but pray for Drake and his mental stability. Um, so sad what the, he this man literally had a portrait of John Wayne Gacy that was signed by John Wayne Gacy on the back of it. He had letters from John Wayne Gacy by his bedpost, literally took them out and showed them to Drake Bell. Like, so this man was convicted um, of, um, was was actually pled guilty to two counts um, and was sentenced to 16, 16 months um, in jail. And Drake Bell said when he came to his sentencing, to Drake Bell's sentencing, his entire side of the courtroom was packed full of people of supporters. Um, there were at least, I think, 50 letters that were written to the judge in support of Drake Bell, um, of not Drake Bell, of Brian, of Brian Peck. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's just so disgusting. They actually named the names of some of the people who wrote in. Um, there, of course, none of the names that I recognize, but if you watch the documentary, you'll be able to see the names of the people. Um, a lot of people in production, a lot of um, some actors and actresses that supported the man as well. Um, Dan Snyder, um, he he's um, he's he, he did an interview actually with a black man um, and said that he wishes that he could have done things better um, than, than he did in the past. He said that he yeah, had no and idea. that black man was from one of the shows that he produced. Oh, OK. No wonder. No wonder. OK, because it was it, it, it was a, it was a black man that I didn't recognize and I didn't recognize the publication that he was working for. So I didn't know exactly who he was. But yes, then um, Dan Snyder came out into it in, in an interview and um, said that he had no idea that this was going on. Um, Drake Bell actually <laughs> said that Dan Snyder was one of the only people who supported him at the time that this was that this was happening when 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 it came out that. Um, that Mr. Brian Peck did all these things to him. But this really opened my eyes. I, I had, this did not surprise me that this was going on, but at the same time, it's still devastating to find out that it happened. Um, mm -hmm. It's just show business, you know what I'm saying? And the- But it shouldn't the, be though. It that, shouldn't it should be, be though, that. exactly. Um, Jennifer, what are your thoughts? And what did you know about this beforehand? Um, and- I've heard all the rumors beforehand. Okay. All Rumors. When this came out, I was, when when they said it was about to come out, I said, "Oh, it's about to be serious now." Yeah. It's, the the truth is about to be televised now, um, because they've been talking about it, whispers about it for so long. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to make sure I say what Latoya said here. I agree with this wholeheartedly. She says, "I always said these child star children stars." don't have alcohol and substance abuse issues for no reason. Mm -hmm. And the common denominator is the production companies. Right. I also blame Drake's mom. Um, yes, very much so. She, she, also, she really wasn't involved in his life the way that we expect mothers to be necessarily. Um, because he actually said- nurturing. <laughs> he actually, now it was his mother who called the police. 
because Drake actually told his mother what was happening. So of course she did the right thing. Um, but the person who actually called it out was Drake Bell's girlfriend's mother because there was a night where Drake said that Brian wanted to take him to Disneyland and he wanted to hang out with his girlfriend instead. And Brian continuously, consistently called his phone and then called his girlfriend's house phone over and over and over like, and over again. How do you again. have that number? Oh, have, that's what I was thinking. Like, how do you even got that number? Exactly. And, you know, Drake Bell's girlfriend's mother pulled him to the side, pulled him into the kitchen and said, what's going on with this 40 year old man um, that he's calling my house and asking for you and your presence and your 15 year old presence. And um, you know, he didn't reveal to her what was going on, but she called his mother um, and said that we got to figure something out. So, but yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, Jennifer. I think I heard you all. It's okay. Latoya says that interview lacked emotion and sincerity to me. Um, Bianca go, said, go into a little bit more explanation for with, with that. Um, Latoya, because I want to know who you're talking about. Oh, she's talking about Dan Schneider. Oh, Dan Schneider. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Bianca says, it was so sad to hear the stories. I remember an episode of Hey Arnold when Helga went to her uh, Arnold shrine and said, oh, Arnold, you make my girlhood tremble. <laughs> Please, people are sick AF, for real. And yes, these things that they, you know, squeeze into children's stuff is just absolutely disgusting. And the fact that they do it, it's like, why? Like, why do this? Like, what's the, what is the point of putting these sexual windows and sexual type of jokes in kids stuff? Like, that, that makes no sense to me. Family Guy, yeah, we get that because that's an adult show. It's, it's an adult yes, show. Yes, it's a cartoon, but it's meant for adults. It comes on, you know, I think after nine o'clock at night. So... You know, but in for a uh, for a program that's specifically garnered for children, why are these jokes in, implemented into into these children's shows? It doesn't make any yeah. sense. Latoya said, uh, "Shame on the parents that saw things and kept quiet for a check." Well, I said for a check. Right. Drake's dad was the only one that spoke up for him. Absolutely. Uh, Bianca Drake's said, "I believe." I believed I re, uh, recorded the clips too. I'll see if I can find them and send them to y'all. That was on uh, Nick too, uh, that show. Um, let's see, on that show. Um, Bianca says, but y'all see how he turned him, turned him against his dad because his dad was uncomfortable with touching. Because his dad saw what was happening. Okay, Latoya said exactly, but he would... Uh, um, to leave Drake's side. Oh, he he would leave Drake's side. Okay. Uh, that's why he had to manipulate his way uh, into him moving out. But um, yeah, this is just one of those things that make me see why Brandy's mother was such a uh, was such a momager. You know? Yes. The, the momagers that we have heard of, at least their children wasn't touched. Right, exactly. But that's all. But I, I encourage everyone to um to go out and watch uh Quiet on the set. Um again, I, I it it doesn't speak as badly on Dan as I was expecting to see it because you know, but it's still bad. I mean, the, the way that he treated his female writers, he if you say that you don't think women are funny, why would you hire female writers? And he also um, made his only two female well, writers well, on the you, Amanda show split a salary. Well, um, you know that people that are soft, they would not be able to stand up to a man. That's why you have females around you. So you could feel superior. That's why. Yeah, that 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 could be definitely it. But um, but yeah, he was he made these two women on the Amanda show, these two writers on the Amanda show, these two female writers on the Amanda show split a salary. And when they found out that he was not allowed to do that, um, they reported his behind to the union. Um, and then he then called and was like, "Are you reporting me? Uh, what 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 the heck is going on?" Um, but yeah, it's it's a very good documentary. It's a four part documentary. Um, on HBO Max. It's really good. It's called Quiet on the Set. Um, I recommend that everyone go out go out and, and watch it. I'm surprised we got up to an hour, child. Go ahead and give your um, social you media so much to talk about. I know. Go ahead and give your social media contacts real quick. Yeah. 
Uh, well, let me make sure. Well, it's two comments remind me to say them. Okay. But I am the light of the Leo. Go ahead and follow me at the light of the Leo on TikTok. Um, you would have had the pleasure to see my last Saturday. I had a funnel cake. Um, <laughs> Mike told me that as soon as he heard the voice, he knew that it was me before seeing, you know, whose uh, TikTok it was. <laughs> So yes, you're, you'll be able to see what I was doing on the weekend. I try to post every once in a while and the kind of the things I be doing, getting out the house, doing my best to get out the house. Y'all, y'all better hope I don't uh, show my whole yard getting done because I'm so excited. We about to put so much money into it, but Lord have mercy. I'm just excited about my yard getting taken care of. I'm, I'm a hush. Um, but yeah, follow me on The Light of Leo. And of course, I have my own uh, YouTube channel at The Light of the Leo. And you can go ahead and see me live every single Monday at 9 p.m. And that's our Monday Reflections to cool down, chill out, have a good laugh on Mondays because they're not always the best days. So um, join me there. And we do have other videos like, you know, uh, reactions to shows and stuff like that. Where did all this talk come from? Jonathan, what's your information? Yes, my Instagram is um, Jojo underscore speaks 3020. My Facebook is Jonathan Lee. My email is William Jonathan Lee at gmail.com. Um, Jennifer, if you can get to those last two comments real quick. Sure. Uh, please make sure to subscribe here to Jojo Speaks. Jojo Speaks. Okay, where were we? Okay, okay. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Uh, Bianca says, y'all, we got the engagement buttons. Hit them to get this algorithm up. It's the little heart bubble right above that chat. Thank you so much, sis, for reminding everybody for that about that. Um, and Latoya said, yes, it will definitely open up your eyes to what went on and continues to go on in the industry. Jonathan, did you notice there was not one single black person on staff? There are no black people on staff. Yeah, no, no black people on staff whatsoever. I think we, I think we talk too much. I'm, I'm really surprised that they didn't point that out during the documentary that there were no black people on on the actual staff. There were black people in the cast, but no black people on on staff. I thought that was very interesting. But there was one black mother that spoke up for her child. That was Brian's um, mother from, from all mm -hmm. of that. Again, I don't even remember him being on the show, but that's because I really didn't watch the reboot of all that, to be honest. So that's no. why I don't remember him. But yeah, she spoke up and spoke out about the weird things that were happening on yeah. set. But again, Dan there Snyder had his favorites. So, you know, that's- Unfortunately. Well, I mean, if if you look at production now, there, there's not a lot of black people in production. Right. So it's something that we need to start looking at more and more. Um, that's why I'm happy about people, you know, people feel a way about Tyler Perry, you know, whatever ways they feel. But one thing I do know, he hired black people. He putting people to work, putting us to work. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. Put money in our pockets. Y There's nothing I can say accounts. bad about that. It just is what it is. I still um, haven't watched Mia Copa, y'all. I, I will get to it eventually, though. Yo, Charlie, you don't have to. It's it's, it's long gone. <laughs> Time is gone. Aaron says, <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night unto you, my sister. Good night, um, Aaron. Thank you for putting up my uh, YouTube channel there and also the Faithful Warrior Ministries at 10 ish a.m. every Saturday. Thank you so much for uh, putting that in there as well. Latoya says, Jennifer, Saturday, I'm going to need uh, my birthday good morning song, please. And thank you. Thank you for telling me now because so I can be ready. God bless you. Right. Um, Bianca said, a funnel cake. Was it good, sister? It was at the, um, the little fair that's at the mall, at Douglasville Mall. That's where I got it from. I don't but know you, if, if that little fair thing like is still up. What do you mean? No. Clarification. There was a fair going on in oh. the parking lot of the mall. Oh, and those were okay. good. Okay, okay. The one okay. inside the mall was absolute trash. Okay, okay. Wow, I, I would have wanted to go to that thing, child. And and the, the funnel cakes were pl plentiful. They look good. Uh, Latoya says and pays them real good. Yes, Tyler Perry do pay. All right, go ahead. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this evening for for a night of hot topics and social commentary. We so appreciate all of y'all being here with us. Um, 
every Thursday night at 9.30. I appreciate y'all so much and I love y'all so much. Thank you guys for reaching out. Thank you guys for being involved. Thank you guys for being here. We love all of y'all. Uh, thank you guys for being here tonight. Th join us next week, same time, same place, same beautiful faces. Um, but until then, we'll say bye for now, y'all. Have a good weekend and a wonderful night, y'all. Bye. Uh, yes, uh, Bianca, at uh, the Arbor, uh, you know, Arbor Mills, whatever they call it, that mall. I hope they're still open. Okay, bye. Bye, y'all.